Well, hi, YouTubers. Okay, book number one, or book 100, counting back, of the Felix I 100 books. And uh, I thought I'd start with a classic. Dame Jacqueline Wilson, the story of Tracy Beaker. Now, I've actually met Jacqueline Wilson on a couple of occasions. Jacqueline Wilson is awesome. She's actually very, very little. Um, I'm five or six. Um, she's about maybe five foot two, five foot three. And she's awesome. She's dripping in silver. When I met her, she's wearing loads of silver. She loves her jewellery. And she's awesome. She's so, so smiley. I met her, um, I live at Uni Southampton. And I met her, I think, for the second time at kind of like a shopping centre okay Jacqueline Wilson didn't leave the sign was only supposed to be for a couple of hours and I got there quite lucky for all the scores came out so I was quite early in the queue the queue was going through the car park and Jacqueline Wilson didn't leave she was fantastic now I also my nephew um, Callum he I it was with me when I met her when she was signed the last whale song which is a fantastic book and I might do a reread for this and she's lovely. Um, Cam actually wrote her a fan letter and Jacqueline Wilson on her tour wrote back to him and also wrote back to me. Lovely little messages on postcards. So Cam is now 18 so um, yeah but Jacqueline Wilson she's written over 100 books and one thing I am looking forward to or looking looking to find I'm going to shout this out now. There were these books she did before she did these types of books called the Stevie Day books. Stevie Day or Stephanie Day was a teenage detective I read them in my teens and I loved them. There was three of them that I read. I loved them and I haven't been able to track them down since. I'm trying to get hold of them. So shout out, hey, to Jacqueline Wilson. Okay, could you republish those? <laughs> Please. Okay, Tracy Beaker. So, obviously the TV show the BBC Crumb produced um, has been out now for many, many years. And I shout out to Danny Harmer who played Tracy Beaker, spot on casting. Now this book I love because it came out 26 years ago. It does not hold back for a second the reality of a child in care. Tracy Beaker is only 11 years old and she has been through the minefield of human emotions at only 11 years old. Her innocence has been snatched from her due to circumstances beyond her control and yet she still keeps an optimism. Her defence coping mechanism is to create these fantastic stories and situations done through the illustrations by Nick um, Sharrett and were obviously brought to life in the TV show. She, her coping mechanism is to bring her, you know, have these wild intense fantasies to distract from her real life is the fact that she is a neglected abandoned child. It starts off quite early on, and I'm actually open straight into this. It doesn't really waste time on a sentiment. I'm literally, this is what you learn. Remember, you open the book, okay? This, this is right at the start. The people in my own family are my mum. I don't have a dad. I lived with my mum when I was little, and we got on great, but then she got this monster gorilla boyfriend, and I hated him, and he hated me back, and beat me up, and so I had to, to be taken into care. No wonder my, my mum sent him packing. My own family live at, I'm not sure exactly where my mum lives now because she has to keep moving about because she gets fed up living in one place for long. Straight away, you are in Tracy's world. A world of neglect and abuse and she's only 11 years old. And it is quite sad how Tracy desperately wants a family. It opens up, the TV show opens, I remember how the TV show opened with her previous foster parents um, abandoning her, abandon her but putting her back into foster care because they're pregnant, they finally became pregnant. So she's gone from hopefully her forever family to being pushed aside for a biological child. Circumstances beyond her control which, which she can't deal with. It's genius. Now the foster, the dumping ground they call it, her the, the care home, it is described as a place quite strict but it's full of love and people who actually do care about their um, about the children. It's quite nice how Tracy sees them as quite unfair at times, being only 11 and trying to obviously get her own way and being a typical 11 year old and they're not taking any of her nonsense. And I absolutely love the fact that the, the, care, the carers are human beings. They're not perfect but they're doing their best for these deprived children. It is quite funny how Tracy literally is looking for love she just wants love and a family and then she meets cam cam obviously from the tv show as well and from the moment they meet you see that connection you absolutely see it and in most other books even well, prior to this it would have been like come home with me i i want to be your foster mother that kind of thing this is reality reality ensures this entire book cam is 
apprehensive because even though she's fond of Tracy, is taking on that commitment of a child. It's brutally realistic. And that's what I love the most about Jacqueline Wilson's books, is her realism. Happy endings don't exist in her books. If they do, there's always a bitter taste to them. Okay? Um, Vicky Angel, well, Vicky's still gone, but she's able to pass over. And the last Wales song, um, The Mother Wakes Up. Um, yeah, that, that kind of thing. There's always an undercurrent of reality running through her books. That's what I love about her. You know, grown up that I am, I do love Jacqueline Wilson's books. And there's one bit here. Here, let me just uh, put out the thing. Okay? Is that this shows how desperate Tracy is after she meets Cam to be fostered by her. Not the fact that she likes Cam, it's just the fact okay, that she's got the feeling that Cam will be the place where she belongs. But also brings in Pete. Now, Pete is a child a few years younger than Tracy, but Tracy's dismissive because they share the same birthday. People can't help that. Okay? Pete's my friend too. We've been bumping into each other in the middle of the night this week on the sheet sortie. Mostly we've just had a little whisper, but last night I found him all huddled up and soggy because he'd had a nightmare about his nan. Strangely enough, I'd had a nightmare about my mum and it had brought a bad attack of hay fever. Normally I try to keep things to my not I try to keep to myself at such moments as some stupid ignorant twits think my red eyes and my nose are because I've been crying. And I never ever cry no matter what. Tracy's defence mechanism is toughness when she is so vulnerable. And it's it's tragic. That is the thing about Tracy Beaker. Tracy Beaker is a quite a tragic character in some respects. I mean, to be denied what most of us take for granted. So this is such an essential and important book within children's literature because of this. Because it shows the reality, but does it in a really, really funny way. Especially due to probably the illustrations by Nick Sherrod. And this was the first time they actually collaborated. So this is an important book for both of them. It kind of, Tracy's, well, the illustrations put you in Tracy's world and kind of give it kind of like a fantasy appeal. Regarding her mum, it is quite sad how Tracy holds her mum up to the idea of womanhood when her mother did abandon her. Now, this was actually explored a lot more in the Tracy Beaker movie, the story and the movie of me, which is very, very good. And, yeah, I've seen that one too. <laughs> Honestly, when, you, when the kids love Tracy Beaker, you wind up seeing them all. So, I'm shouting out right now, it's 26 years old, but also, I did a bit of research, and there is a new book coming out. Tracy Beaker, 26 years on. Now she'll be in her 30s. Well, actually, no, 37. It's based on a point of view, I'm going to put a link to this, from the eyes of her teenage daughter. Now, this is quite interesting, because um, Jacqueline Wilson um, has been, in her later books, bringing back old characters in the Butterfly Garden, or the Butterfly Game. Um, it had Ruby and Garnet from Double Act and when we were reading Lily Alone we were discussing how it was quite sad how when they were taken into care not a spoiler, the book's a few years old um, there wasn't a moment where a uh, curly haired woman leaves and someone called out goodnight Tracy just to kind of would have Tracy that would have been just a nice touch okay so Tracy Beaker as an adult now Maybe it's just me, and Tracy's a bit of an optimist, even um, at times. She's a was between optimism and pessimism. I'm the kind of person who, if I want to meet Tracy Beaker as an adult, I want to meet things going brilliantly for Tracy. I want happy end. I want a happy end for Tracy. Her childhood was so bad. For her future, I just wanted good things to happen to her. So anyway, I've been talking way too much about this for a book that's been out and everyone should have read this book by now. So, <laughs> one book down, 99 to go. Thanks for joining me once again on this journey. Jacqueline Wilson, Dame Jacqueline Wilson, Story of Tracy Beaker. Sign off now, YouTubers. Bye now.